when he gets the presidency, when, he, when he's in power, uh, where does that sit him in relation to will he get further opposition or will he get rid of the opposition? And I think this will certainly change the projection of where the United States goes economically, politically, economically, and socially as well. That's going to be interesting, the second card that he plays. What else is up the sleeve there that he's been planning? We know he's got issues in terms of Europe, wanting yes. to end that war. Yep. You know he's going to have an opinion on Taiwan and China. Of course. And, and, and where that goes, the sovereignty of Taiwan. You know he's going to have issues on, on, on where Russia is in the mix and the BRICS nations as well. Mm-hmm. We've seen him play his hand in terms of, you know, we want the United States to be a leaders in the crypto space. That's particularly so in terms of the warfare that's going on, de-dollarizing the US dollar yeah. um, and, and going there. So it's going to be really interesting how this plays out after the after the November. Before we start, we need to tell you up front we are not a licensed financial planning, accounting or law firm. This is simply an education program which will give you factual information. We do not give any general or specific advice around finance, business investing, options trading or anything else. That is not what this presentation does. Please see a licensed financial planner when it comes to any investment advice you need. The, uh, you know, the greater wealth, obviously, we do marry politics and uh, the world of finance. And today we're going to do things a little bit differently because, let's be honest, it's a pretty sizable few days. It's been huge mm. over the last few days uh, with, of course, the assassination attempt of Donald J. Trump in the United States. Um, we've been looking at that, of course. Um, it, it, it's tragic that, you know, the father passed away in that incident as well uh, with the bullets going astray there and that there was a loss of life. I mean, people usually assume that, you know, the assassin got what he deserved and all that sort of stuff. But you got to remember, this is someone's child, mm-hmm. son. Um, there's a mother, a father involved in this sure. sort of thing. So I don't want to make cheap of that. And it, it's not like a movie. This is reality, guys. Um, That's a really good point, actually, because we do. We get rolled into it, don't we? And we sort of see it as, as a movie because we're watching it through our screens. Speaking of movies, there was an interesting movie. I think it was called Arlington Road years ago. Mm-hmm. And it had a very interesting perspective as a professor on there saying that when the assassination attempt mm-hmm. happens, the public wants to have the reassurance that everything they've caught got him. They've got him, the bad guy, and that the world will go back to its normal state again. And okay. it's interesting that, that kind of psychology that plays along with that. And so I true. noticed that were pictures coming out very quickly. Some of them were inaccurate as well as to who had been the alleged uh, assassin in this in this situation. So okay. I think it's it, you got to be slow to point the finger. Good, very good point. And be very if you're going to point the finger, a finger rather, be very deliberate about it. It's very interesting. There's a lot of scrutiny going on in terms of how this affects, um, you know, the whole political race that is coming up in November. Why do we bring this up on an economic show? Because politics is so tied into economies. Um, I'll touch on the economics in a minute, uh, but let's talk about the politics in a moment. Uh, For for the the moment, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because... Obviously, the Democrats have had a huge issue in lead up to this because of the that that debate has yes. been dividing them all over the shop. Oh, but yeah. hang on, the follow up interview with old Stephanopoulos or whatever the guy from you know, Sesame Street, th- when that follow up interview was done, that was going to clear everything up, mate. It was going to. He just had a bad day. He had jet lag from ten days before. I mean, come on, mm. We're, let's use these excuses. And he absolutely failed in that interview. He looked like a great fool once again. And even the far left, you know, the, the NBCs, the, the MSNBCs, the CNNs, all of that, even they have turned on him. It is time to to turn turn him over. He's you know he is on his deathbed, and this and what we're seeing is elderly abuse, right? It is time to to move on. But to to see this and the rhetoric that's come from the left, in my mind has been a catalyst for this violence, for this attack on Donald Trump. Well, up to this point, Trump was playing it very quiet. He was. Why wouldn't you? Because they're imploding on themselves and destroying themselves or being being so divided in the public space. Correct. As far as the Democrats are concerned. And now, of course, this has occurred where within 130 to 150 yards from a building, Mm -hmm. this assassin climbed the building. There was uh, reports that he was seen um, climbing that building uh, with a rifle and uh, people were pointing that out to the uh, the police around that area. I mean, that is not a very far distance from the, the podium itself no, um, so. in terms of uh, riflemanship and taking a shot. They're, they're easily, uh, you know, assassins have been known to take 
professional assassins to, to be able to hit the target from two kilometres away. So yes. 150 yards is nothing in that sense. Um, the Secret Service, of course, are going to be uh, reviewed in terms of what they did, what they didn't mm -hmm. do, of course, as you would in any incident like this. Of course. Their priority should be to get the target out yep. uh, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, and, of course, there's other footage that has emerged where there are shots of the uh, the sniper protecting uh, the president at that point. Um, oh, of course. Aiming the other direction and seeing their response to the gunshots that were, were fired. So it's very interesting, the reviews that have come out uh, in this. From an economic point of view, um, admittedly, as soon as the, uh, the, the shots rang out, uh, heard across the globe, as they're putting it, um, the Donald Trump uh, meme coin went through the roof uh, in terms of uh, it, its um, it, it, its numbers. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes what, out. What kind of growth are we talking about? With in in relation to sorry to put you on the spot there. That's mate. okay. Let me get the let the chart up. Uh, it it was it went from about eight dollars seven to about ten dollars fifteen in a matter of hours so 20 percent basically yeah, yeah it, right. it was a lot for a, for a crypto coin to do that and of course it's going to be interesting crypto trades 24 hours so over the weekend that that plays out um the market's not are opening it'll be interesting to see what happens to the uh, the true social stock mm -hmm. uh, tonight as that opens on the stock market as well That'll be and you're seeing a pouring of money going in to of course support the uh, the victims of this plight people who were injured in the shooting and the family who lost their, their dad basically so it's been good to see people get behind that it is it really is i mean and get behind this man who is you're right i mean he's protecting his daughter um, or daughters i'm not really sure i certainly know one mm. um you know this this man is like any dad okay is a hero to to look after his children like that so what's been interesting is it's going to be etched in the minds of americans is mm. that image of donald trump standing up on the stage after being shot with his hand in the air Absolutely. the u.s flag behind him mm. waving and saying fight 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 that is going to be etched into history. That's a Look, that iconic mate, symbol now. I am wearing right now the T-shirt of the mugshot uh, of Donald uh, J. Trump, yeah. right, which I wear with great pride because several things. Like I've made it very clear many, many times, I was not a big fan. In fact, I was quite against him going into power in 2016. But I saw what he did, and I've seen the man that he has, that not has become, but certainly in a public persona he's definitely become, and I, I was wrong. And I'm w willing to wear that. And to see the lawfare against him and see the complete corruption of the left that's, that's taken place. So to see now that other image of him defiantly fist in the air, that is etched into even, well, American folklore, obviously, but world uh, history, we're going to see that image forever. This is going straight to the history books. What's interesting is that in how many Americans are mine now, it's, it's a done deal now. As it is far a as done deal. We're voting for yep. Trump. Um, Shaq had an interesting perspective on a previous uh, discussion that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll throw it over to you, Shaq, in terms of how many Americans uh, may not, uh, uh, that are Democrats, may not come to the voting poll, a uh, voting booth on the, on the day that the, the polls are happening. I, I thought you, you thought my interesting perspective was uh, we've been encouraging uh, youth to be more involved in politics, but this wasn't quite <laughs> what we would have had in mind. Um, no, no, look, I, I've been talking to a lot of my friends in the United States, and um, just just at the outset, I'll just say I'm, I'm not a conservative. I've never said that I am, but I, I'm not a progressive, right? I sort of sit centre-right on a lot of things. Um, I have a lot of friends that are on the left. The reason why that I, I like that is because I, I don't like a lot of regulations because of my advocacy for small businesses, but I also recognise that people you know, are struggling as mere mortals and they need a little bit of assistance sometimes. So I've got friends that are Democrats, I've got friends that are Republicans, and I've had a lot of friends of mine who are on the Republican side that get along really well with their neighbours, but the neighbours are Democrats and their neighbours are you know, going to vote for Biden, who've actually taken their signs down from their front yard because they just can't they just can't do it and, and what they've been saying to the neighbors is look i just don't have it in me anymore um i i, I don't have the heart to vote for trump i'm just not going to show up to the vote at all and remember because they don't have to vote in the united states so i think that's what you're going to say i think you'll see a slight uptick in people that are going to vote for trump um i think that if you have a look at what happened after he got convicted in new york all of the Republicans, including some of those like Lincoln Project Republicans and never Trumpers, um, people like Mitt Romney, immediately just said, that's it. 
I'm supporting Donald Trump because what happened was an abuse of the legal system. I think sure. now that you, you know, you've seen this man that they've tried to stop him in every conceivable way. Tucker Carlson you know, said before, that if, if they run out of options, they'll try and assassinate him and, you know, look at what's happened. Run out of options. So I think a lot yeah. of people have just said, like, he's, he's a man who has, you know, he's been attacked in the media, he's been attacked, they, they, they've tried to, uh, you know, they, they tried to, to, some states tried to remove him from the ballot or, or pass laws that would prevent him from being on the ballot even if he got the nomination of the Republican Party. Like, it's just been all of these underhanded uh, uh, techniques. And then, um, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, this happens. And I think what that does is it means that every person who's a Republican is going to be out to vote. You're going to see a really high Republican turnout. Um, I just don't think you're going to see a particularly high Democrat turnout in this election. And I, th and I think as a result, there's a real possibility that he could actually take some states that we never would have expected. I mean, at the moment, he's just taken the lead in New Jersey. He's just taken the lead in Virginia, right? Um, Illinois, which is where Chicago is, looks like it's in play. New New York looks like it could flip. I don't think it will, but it but it could. Hawaii looks like it could flip. I mean, you're, you're Minnesota. Like you're talking about places that have just never flipped before. And the thing is that also, like when he went and did that big rally in the Bronx, who does that? Do you know what I mean? Like, that you've right. never seen Republicans go to those areas where they're not well liked. Donald Trump went That's there and said, "Hey, I'm from here." So yeah. I think I think that this could be a real landslide. I, I think that that could really happen. There was also a, a comment that was up there earlier um, uh, about the the you know the uh, footage of the shot, uh, and you could actually mm. see it was through the air and that sort of thing. Um, if you could find that comment, that'd be great, Travis, and bring that up on the screen. I think look, everybody's got a lot of theories. Uh, some are going to be right, some are going to be wrong, but the ultimate thing about free speech is you've got the right to say it, and you've got the right to say it here on edge, and you might be edited out. That's for sure. We don't well, and, do that and, sense. And, and you should, you know, like, <laughs> I don't, don't want to put it this way, but you shouldn't have an edge being the only place where you should be able to have free speech. You should oh, be able to say whatever you want to say. That's that's mm -hmm. the problem, and it's a big problem in the United States, you know, with the council culture, all that sort of stuff, right? Yep. I've said things on this network that you guys don't actually agree with, right? And I have very liberal positions on things like legalizing drugs and you know, a whole whole heap of other things, right? And I don't I don't really think I'm on the left, but maybe on some things I am. None of you guys say, look, Shaquille, you know, we're not ever gonna have dinner with you again. We're not gonna have a beer with you because you have a position that we don't hold. You know, we we have great conversations. Um, you know, everybody who's on the left thinks that I'm a, a hard right winger, but some of them will actually say to me, look, you're too far to the right. I don't really want to associate with you right now. I'm like, well, go get stuff, mate. Like, what the hell? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. This kind of goes back to the fact that, okay, if what had happened uh, to Trump had happened to someone on the left, okay, a left politician, right now they'd be rioting, there'd be bricks through windows, they'd be looting, all that. That's the reality of it, right? That's what would be happening. Yeah. We could have that conversation. We could have whatever conversation. Check, like, we can disagree. The the centre yeah. and the centre right, we could have that sort of discussion and we can actually argue about things, walk away and still be friends. Something we used to do as Australians, as Americans, this is something we did because, quite frankly, you know, we, we were, I don't know, kind of some of our ethics. We understood that you grow as a person, that if you actually hear different opinions, if you are just in a bubble and you hear nothing but, the contents of that bubble, you you can become radicalised, okay? Or you can just become so censored into submission, right? And I think that over certainly over the last three years in Australia, we've been censored into submission, a lot of the population. So, no, 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 we will always, whether, look, whether I disagree with you or agree with you, Shaq, the fact of the matter is obviously you're always going to be welcome on the show because we want differing opinions, right? Well, thank I, you very much. I'm getting the bets oh, out of my ass now, shall I? <laughs> yeah. So, guys, I just want to quickly do something. You, but, you know, so, Aaron, sorry, before, before, you do, before you do, Travis, just, just very quickly. So, Josh made a comment. It's not going to be Biden. It's going to be Harris. In a weird kind of way, um, I actually think that this has helped Biden. I don't think it's helped the Democrats. I think it's actually helped Biden. I think that there's that all the attentions now come off Biden um, in relation to he is... You know, he's too, he's too old, he's too feeble, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think this is kind of a done deal now. I think it's going to be Trump-Biden. Um, and, and quite frankly, I think the Democrats really should have been 
like on this right right away either you're going to replace him or you're not the longer that's gone on the 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 more that people have lost faith in the democrat party but yeah i think that because of the fact that the the news cycle is going to be dominated for the next few weeks i would say about this assassination and you know who is the who is the the guy that that uh, that pulled the trigger i don't normally mention their names but it's kind of funny that his surname is crooks um but anyway so I think that, you know, there's some videos that look like it's him where he t says, this is my name and I hate the Republicans and I hate Trump and all that sort of stuff. So the post-mortems and the investigation about whether the Secret Service and, and the other security services didn't do what they should have done and all that, that's going to dominate the cycle. Um, don't forget that early voting opens in the US in just over 60 days. So I think with the lack of attention on Biden from here on in, uh, I think it's pretty much a done deal that Biden will take the nomination at the DNC. And also, guys, remember that the RNC is starting today, American time. So okay. Donald yes, Trump true. will have that nomination in the next few days. I made oh, the, I made the comment Trump, I, Sorry. Sorry, I've got to jump in here. So Taz from um, Twitter. Sorry, not Twitter, Twitch. So that's a gaming online streaming platform we stream to there as well. She's actually sent us a video. So I'm just going to quickly bring it in. This is actually the senior photographer from the New York Times who actually sh captured all these videos. So I, I just want to quickly play and do a reaction to this. So check this out. My name is Doug Mills. I've been covering politics since 1983, and I was yesterday covering President Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. I was taking pictures, and that's when the pops started happening. And I just happened to have my finger on the shutter, and I heard the pops and just kept shooting. I didn't know what I had captured, but when I got to my laptop, I could see that bullet flying behind his head because it's definitely not in the frames right before it. And, and it's not in afterwards, it's only that one frame. And I was shooting in eight thousandth of a second. It captured that streak behind him. I've covered the president for 40 plus years and I always know which way they come on stage and which way they go off. And the closest stairs were to my right. So I ran over to that side and witnessed him being helped up to his feet. And my immediate reaction was, oh my God, he's, he's alive. And then all of a sudden, he got near the edge of the stage and raised up his fist and defiant. And I could see the blood on his face then. That defiant went away like in a split second. And he became very serious. I thought he looked very pale. Two very different moments happened, you know, in a matter of second. It is a moment that is unlike any in my lifetime, my history, my job of covering the White House since 1983. And you never think about something like this ever happening because it's so frightening. So, yeah, it actually was, it kind of looks a little bit funny because <laughs> it, it kind of looks a little bit funny because when, when the first shot you've got the the bullet coming, and the second shot you've got here after he's grabbed his ear, you've got his hand like that. It looks like he caught the bullet like something out of the Matrix. <laughs> you just look at those first two shots. The, the, the other really oh. iconic moment is when he's putting a twist up. And he's got all these um, Secret Service guys there. But the American flag is actually hanging from above. So because of the way the photo was taken, it actually looks like the American flag's upside down. Oh, really? And I, I just thought that, that was – I'm not sure if it's in there in that collage that you just uh, put up, but um, I'll, I'll send it to you guys after we get off air. Uh, and, and, yeah, I thought that was a really sort of telling kind of situation because if that um, bullet actually had have been a few centimetres over – and cause serious damage or death to 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 uh, for President Trump. I I know this has been said by everybody, but I, I tend to agree that this could have been this could have caused so much turmoil. It, it would it would resemble something like a civil war. The, the amount of yes. instability that you would get in the US if that happened. Yeah. The irony. Too, I still think it might end up that way. All the pictures in the background of of people who were at the rally. Yes. All of them, are, a lot of them are holding the, the sign, you're fired. And I know. The irony was just oh, like, wow. I, I, felt, I, I saw the exact same thing. I thought, your time, it could not be worse, you know. Mm. I mean, look, when, when you've got Biden saying put a bullseye on him, right, yeah. 
Uh, and you hang on, hang on. Isn't Trump the guy who's accused of inciting violence? Woo, 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 right? Yeah, like, this just drives, I know, this just mm. drives me nuts. Can you can the, imagine the, him shooting a new trap, a new campaign ad, and the, the guy behind the camera is like, okay, three, two, one, shoot. It's like, no, no, don't say it like that. <laughs> uh, what so you can take all the matrix memes and just see Trump start doing the neo yeah, thing I behind it. it. Already seen it. Already yeah, seen it. Yeah. Hey, look, just quick. Uh, I haven't uh, seen that. You have to show uh, me. I haven't seen that. Oh, definitely. Uh, more people are jumping online. Hello, Damo. Great to see you, mate. Apparently, you found us on Twitch. What a fantastic fella! And I cannot actually read the name of the person who's making some comments there, but I've seen. Oh, oh my it's God. Taz. I have no idea. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, you have no idea yeah. how many Trump Matrix videos are out there, or memes rather. So, so true. Uh, and great to see you there as well, Tash. Really love your insight. Really do. Uh, this is just. Look, to me, this is, like I said it before, this is a JFK moment in our lives. Well, in terms of economics, yes, it is. And, and in terms of economics, we made the comment last week that uh, a lot of the nations are already starting to plot, assuming that Trump gets in, how's that going to affect our foreign policy? Sure. Can you imagine what they're saying now in those roundtables um, in, in different oh. nations? It's like almost this is a done deal. Mm -hmm. Assume that Trump's going to now be the president. Yep. Where does that situate us in terms of politics? Where does it situate us in terms of um, economies? It's going to have a very big ripple effect across the globe. It will. It will. And, you know, we need to, well, you know, be aware of this, see the opportunities and also the dangers as they appear. And how is the man characterised in terms of his change of his personality? Because he was tough before mm -hmm. from 2016 mm -hmm. onwards. Now look what he's gone through, what he's had to endure in terms of lawfare, in terms of a bullet um, yep. this guy is coming back. Look out. He will not be messing if he gets that. Again. Um, what people in the US have been saying to me that are actually on the Republican side is that after the debate, they could finally have reasonable, rational conversations with people where mm -hmm. it wasn't gaslighting, where it wasn't, no, no, Biden's not old. You guys are just using cheap fakes. He didn't stumble over his words, etc. They could finally have conversations. What I've heard since the weekend is, Finally, we can actually openly say that we're Trump supporters, where before yes, we were too yeah. afraid to say anything. And I think that that carries a lot. And and I think that that kind of that kind of momentum is going to be unstoppable in the US. I think it's really clear that he's going to win. As I said before, about he's leading in all seven of the swing states. There's a realistic potential that he could turn a couple of deep blue states uh, over to him. To him, so. Yeah, I, I think that this is a done deal. I don't think it matters. I don't think it would matter who you put in to replace Biden if you were going to replace him. I just don't think it makes a difference. I think Trump's got this. Hmm. Oh, Hands down. Look, Hands down. Absolutely. And if he sense. doesn't, it will be civil war. Yeah. I, I was for That's how far I think it, this has gone beyond a joke now. Um, it, it's just insane what they're trying to do. And even oh, the coverage. Yeah. So the fundraiser for the, the two guys that died and all that sort of stuff, Go, try and find them on go on Google. They're, they're all oh. being censored out. So this is like the extent they're trying to go to try and limit how much this has helped Trump the assassination attempt is insane. So I think if there's all of a sudden that's, that's, another that's magical, it's like you watch the voting at the last election it was like going uh, going up, then all of a sudden just spiked for Biden, but no one else. So if the, something like that happens again at this election, I think it will genuinely be a civil war. So he has won the heart of the people. At no this doubt. point, uh, because the people are saying they have gone too far. Um, what will happen? Th this was what I was going to say beforehand. Okay. I just come back back to me. What will happen when he gets when he gets the presidency? When mm. he, when he's in power, uh, where does that sit him in relation to will he get further opposition or will he get rid of the opposition? And I think this will certainly change the projection of where the United I States agree. goes economically, politically, mm. economically, and socially as well. Mm. That's going to be interesting the second card that he plays. What else is up the sleeve there that he's been planning? We know he's got issues in terms of Europe yes. wanting to end that war. Yep. You know he's going to have an opinion on Taiwan and China of course. And, and, and where that goes in the sovereignty of Ty Taiwan. You know he's going to have issues on on and where Russia is in the mix and the BRICS nations as well. Mm -hmm. We've seen him play his hand in terms of, you know, we want the United States to be leaders in the crypto space. That's particularly so in terms of the warfare that's going on uh, de-dollarizing the US dollar yeah. um, and and going there. So it's going to be really interesting how this plays out after the after the November. I totally agree. I, I see a comment there. This is the end of the uh, Nuremberg regime. 
ain't that the fact? Like to me, so I'll, you know, say, we... I'll say that he is likely. The Republicans are likely to to take control of both chambers of Congress, the House of Reps and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think and by significant margin, actually. Um, and, and the Democrats, you know, I've been saying prior to the, the assassination attempt, I've been saying what the Democrats ought to be focusing on is the House and the Senate because they're going to end up losing the whole bloody lot. Um, they haven't done that. So I, I think the Republicans will control, the, uh, control everything, which means that Trump has the ability to be able to do a lot of things and he doesn't have to worry about the next election because he can't contest it in the first place. So that's a very interesting and unique position for him to be in. Um, I think that you will start to see more trust in the US dollar as he, as he uh, seeks to increase um, some of the lack of trust that's been developed over, uh, over the last uh, 20, 20, 30 years or so. Um, I also think from, from all accounts, I know people that have worked with him at the White House, he'll say to me that what he'll actually do is he'll actually call people from different uh, sides of, of each issue to come in and talk to him so he can actually hear all of the information and then make a decision based on what he thinks. So as far as international trade is concerned, um, I wouldn't be surprised to, to, to find out that he's bringing people from all over the world to encourage that international trade to tell them what some of the roadblocks are so that he could fix them. So I, I, I think that that will be great. Um, to be fair to Biden and his administration, Biden has tried to improve relationships with the international community. I think that the concern is that the way that he's tried to do that is by doing much of the same as what's been done in the past. Whereas what Trump is doing is this is an America first idea. We want to make sure that we're not being taken advantage of. And there's a difference between that and that we're just you know, acquiescing to unfair and unreasonable demands from Europe, for example. And you know what? I'm, I'm British, as everyone knows. NATO. Why shouldn't the European Union countries be contributing a certain percentage of their GDP into supporting NATO? I think that Donald Trump, there are some issues I don't really agree with him on, but on that particular issue, the funding of NATO, was that not unreasonable for him to say to Germany, one, pay up, and two, don't buy oil from Russia and then tell us that we're supposed to protect you from Russia? No, it's not on. on. I thought that I'm was perfectly better, reasonable. Look, Jack, I've got a far better idea throw the whole concept of nato exactly where it belongs in the bin it is over that is the that is the politics of neon 80 years ago and it is not relevant and quite frankly nato has just become a warmonger at that by whoever funds it and that's what's been happening with biden this is a proxy war with russia that we're using the ukraine as a, you know not we the, the americans and certainly the american government actually specifically are using this whole nato thing as a way of fighting putin um, which is just about regime change to economically benefit the US. It's an and, absolute load. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything in support of Putin um, because I, I don't support him, and I, and I certainly don't support what's happened over there. And I'm not an expert in this field, so maybe I'm talking out of school. But I do think that it's worth noting that Putin didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, "I'm going to go into the Ukraine." Right? He actually brought up issues of what was happening in eastern Ukraine for at least 10 years that I'm aware of. He brought up the United Nations. He brought it up uh, in the European Parliament. He's talked about the issues and, and, and what he thinks are problems with human rights abuses, et cetera. He's talked about that for such a long period of time, and then finally he went and did something about it. So for him to be chastised all over the world, and I remember when this first happened, I kept asking everybody, why are we not hearing from him? Why are we not hearing what it is that he says he wants and why he went in there? There was a complete media blackout on that. And as soon as there's a media blackout on information, I always go, why? Why aren't they telling me what I want to know? Why aren't they telling me all the details? I was speaking to a Russian friend of mine just the other day, and she was telling me about her life in Russia, okay, uh, up until 1999 when they left, which subsequently is actually the time that obviously Putin came to power. And there was drive-by shootings as a daily thing in their area. There were drugs. There were dead people in the street. It basically kind of looked like what San Francisco looks like today in a lot of ways, okay? It was just a rotting, because, you know, the fall of the Soviet Union, it was a terrible mess. I Again, I don't know enough about Putin, but I know this. 
I know that in the time he's been in there, I know that the the Russian people, as it, the bulk of the Russian people, believe in him because he actually saved that country and cleaned it up and all those things. And the fact that she lived in a complete state of terror, right? And her, you know, her mother had to work ridiculous hours, all that kind of stuff. It was just a horrible, horrible place to be once the, the eye curtain had, had fallen, okay? Mm. And Putin has made those changes. When I see that Putin, rather, has been making uh, attempts first before the actual war started to actually prevent the war, since the war has been there in Ukraine to actually stop the war, and the person that has stopped it, well, no, the entity that has stopped it is the US government. The US government have been pouring this money in and have been controlling it. And I'm not saying it's it's Biden because Biden, as we all know, it's weekend at Biden's. He's being held up. The actual war criminal, in my eyes, is the same man that started more wars and killed more people than you could poke a stick at, but started more wars and started more conflicts than anyone. And that is Obama. We are just seeing a third term of Obama. That's my opinion. Now, the show is almost over. We've only got a couple of minutes to go. So I'll throw back to Derek uh, once I've yeah, just had my little say. <laughs> I'd, I'd, like I'd like to say the same thing as well that I said on our other show, if you don't mind. So just leave me enough time to do that, please. Okay. No problem. Why don't you do it now, Shaq? Go for it. <laughs> All right, yeah, so I do I do want to very just quickly say um, I've got – I went to the Royal Flying Doctors uh, service here in uh, Darwin, uh, so I bought that shirt. I uh, went out afterwards on a dinner cruise, um, and I was saying to the people on the on the cruise, my mother was there as well, I uh, said, geez, we're so lucky. You know, I'm so grateful that I was born in this country, absolutely love this country. I didn't always. There was a time when I was very angry at Australia, and it wasn't until I left and travelled all over the world that I went, oh, my goodness, I'm so lucky that I was born in Australia and I've come back with such a great love for the place. Um, I'll just say that while I was there, we, we had like a virtual reality thing, you could like reenact the, the bombing um, of Darwin, and it was just so interesting to see the level of respect and mutual friendship that Darwin and Australia actually has with the Japanese um, and and how well respected the Japanese are here in Darwin. And I think that that speaks volumes. So when we talk about division, uh, if Australia and Japan can overcome their differences and become friends and have that mutual respect, surely Democrats and Republicans can, surely the Labor Party and the Liberal Party can, um, maybe even the Greens, <laughs> maybe i'll try and keep a straight face but you know I, I really feel like we should recognize that much of what we fight about and argue about is not that important it, it is somewhat important but we don't need to be so vicious towards each other and please 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 don't let australia ever turn into what we're seeing in the united states hmm. travis your final thoughts i think the swamp will be shitting their pants out the moment <clears throat> because Boys. have you ever played a sport where you cop a hit to the balls or something like it hurts like hell? You get up and you got vengeance in your eyes. You, you, you're, you're gunning for them. I think what's that happening? I, I think what? I don't know what's the you've got. So I've actually played sports unlike you. No. Um, <laughs> so I think the, the US is going to get the Senate. I think they're going to get the House. They're going to get Trump. And there's and they've already got the Supreme Court. So I think Trump is not going to pull punches in the, when he wins. I think the CIA, the FBI, pretty much every single aspect of the swamp is in severe danger. And he's not going to care what other people think because it's his final term. He doesn't have to get reelected. I think he's not going there with a slammer hat, sledgehammer. He's going to have some massive overhauls, like mass firings and criminal charges. So I, I, I'm really excited for America. And it's either I go one of two ways. Either there's mass imprisonments or there's going to be civil war. And I hate to say it, I, I, it's one of those festering wounds where you got to cut out this, the bad flesh before you can fix it. And I think this is one of those things that should have happened years ago and there was no president strong enough to actually do it. So that's just my thoughts. Jarek, your thoughts? A few days before the United States celebrated the 4th of July. They did. And, of course, that is Independence Day for the Americans. And they find themselves, ironically, this many years later, fighting for their freedoms yet again. Mm -hmm. um, it's fascinating to see how the heart of the average 
American citizen is changing. Um, if it, you know the mega supporters have we've heard from Shaquille saying we can now admit that we're Republicans <laughs> again, <laughs> as opposed to uh, having to kind of avoid it and those awkward conversations. Um, there's been a lot of talk saying this has woken up the normies, and mm -hmm. I think the normies are waking up, going, "Why are they adamantly out to get this guy? Why? What is it about this guy that they just?" try to put him down, put him down, put him down. So hopefully a lot of good can come out of this situation and it makes people question what's been going on for the last how many decades or even their lifetimes that needs to change in the United States. And I, I believe that it's going to have a global effect as people reconsider how they negotiate with the United States. Um, where does that put us politically, socially, economically? It's exciting times ahead. Exciting times. I love the fact that you say that. And again, it's always great to see the old glasses as half full there. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's uh, been part of the show online. This is a big, big thing. I, I always say it. And I'll, I'll never stop. This is this is so much about what Edge is about. We want to be interactive. We want to know your opinions. I'm personally very sick of the media, the corporate media, who's been telling us what to think for so many years. I want to hear from the everyday Aussie. So those who have come on board really appreciate that. It is just absolutely wonderful. All right. Right, while I scramble Hang around, Aaron, 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 quickly, back. if you do want to listen to some awesome music, you can stream 24 hours a day on edgeradioaustralia.com. And if you want to actually build the wealth foundations, you can go to do Derek's courses at blueskyfactory.com.au. The link's in the chat's already Which, right outside of the chat. Absolutely. Blue Sky it is yeah. the end of the show. It's been the Greater Wealth here on Edge Radio Australia. Thank you.